Now I want to give a method for actually evaluating volume integrals in the special case where the region that we're integrating over is a rectangular box like this. What this notation means is that this box consists of all points x, y, z in three-dimensional space such that x is between a and b and y is between c and d and z is between r and s. And our goal is to evaluate the integral over v of a function f of x, y, z, dv. We want to evaluate this integral. And we're going to evaluate this integral using Fubini's theorem. But now it's going to be a three-dimensional version of Fubini's theorem. We previously used Fubini's theorem to evaluate double integrals when we were integrating a function of two variables over a rectangle. Now we're integrating a function of three variables over a rectangular box. So instead of our two-dimensional version of Fubini's theorem that we used previously, we're going to be using a three-dimensional version of Fubini's theorem. Let's quickly review the two-dimensional version of Fubini's theorem. So if, we, if we're integrating a function of two variables over a rectangle like this, what Fubini's theorem tells us is that the integral over r of f of x, y, dA, now f is a function of two variables here, this is equal to the integral from c to d of the integral from a to b of f of x, y, dx, dy. Notice that the inner integral is with respect to x because, and, and x goes from a to b. The outer integral is with respect to y, and y goes from c to d. So this dx has to match up with these limits of integration. And this dy has to match up with these limits of integration. We have to always be careful about that. And Fubini's theorem also tells us that this integral is also equal to the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d of f of x, y, dy, dx. This is also true. And notice, the inner integral is with respect to y. y goes from c to d. The outer integral is with respect to x, and x goes from a to b. So this has to match up with these limits of integration. This has to match up with these limits of integration. Fubini's theorem for volume integrals is perfectly analogous. It tells us that this integral is equal to the integral from r to s of the integral from c to d of the integral from a to b of f and then dx dy dz. This inner integral, this inner integral is with respect to x, and x goes from a to b. And then this integral is with respect to y, and y goes from c to d. And then the outer integral is with respect to z, and z goes from r to s. Now, this is not the only way to write this integral as an iterated integral. Fubini's theorem gives us other options. We could also write this integral instead as the, for example, the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d of the integral from r to s of f of x, y, z. Now, let me be careful about this part. What do, I, what do I write here? Do I write dx, do I write dy, or do I write dz? Well, in this inner integral, the limits of integration are, are from r to s. And z goes from r to s. This inner integral is with respect to z. And now, what about this integral? This, the limits of integration here are, this integral goes from c to d. And y is, y goes from c to d. So this integral is with respect to y. And finally, 
this outer integral is with respect to x because x goes from a to b. This is another equally correct way to compute, to express this volume integral as an iterated integral. And you could imagine other possibilities. These are, these are not the only ways to order these three integrals. You know, we could also have, how about this? How about integral from A to B of the integral from R to S of the integral from C to D, F of X, Y, Z. Now, what do I write here? Well, Y goes from C to D. So this inner integral is with respect to Y. And then what do I write here? Well, the thing I write here has to match up with these limits of integration. Z goes from R to S. So here I have to put DZ. And then finally, this outer integral is with respect to X because X goes from A to B. So that's how it works. And there's other possibilities. There's other, other ways you could order these iterated integrals. Let's do an example of using Fubini's theorem to evaluate a volume integral. We want to integrate this function, x, y, z squared, over this rectangular box. In this box, this consists of all points x, y, z in three-dimensional space, such that x is between 0 and 1, y is between minus 1 and 2, and z is between 0 and 3. And we want to evaluate this integral, integrating this function over the box b. According to Fubini's theorem, this integral is equal to the integral from 0 to 3 of the integral from minus 1 to 2 of the integral from 0 to 1 of x, y, z squared dx dy dz. Now let's evaluate this inner integral. We're integrating with respect to x. So we need to find an antiderivative of this function with respect to x. And here's an antiderivative, x squared y z squared over 2. And then we need to take our antiderivative and evaluate it at the endpoints. So from 0 to 1. When we plug in 1 for x, we get y z squared over 2. When we plug in 0 for x, we get 0. So the inner integral reduces to just, it evaluates to y z squared over 2. Now, let's do the next integral. We have to do the integral from minus 1 to 2 of y z squared over 2 dy. To evaluate this integral, we need to find an antiderivative of this function with respect to y. Here's an antiderivative, y squared, z squared over 4, and we're going to take our antiderivative and evaluate it at the endpoints, so from minus 1 to 2. When we plug in 2 for y, we get just z squared. When we plug in minus 1 for y, we get z squared over 4. So this is equal to 3z squared over 4. OK, so finally, we have to evaluate the outer integral. We have to do integral from 0 to 3 of 3z squared over 4 dz. To evaluate this integral, we need an antiderivative of this function with respect to z. Here's an antiderivative, z cubed over 4. We take our antiderivative, we evaluate it at the endpoints, so from 0 to 3. When we plug in 3 for z, we get 27 over 4. When we plug in 0 for z, we get 0. So this is our final answer, 27 over 4.